started. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the uh, first of a few uh, webinars that we have scheduled for this end of year season. Uh, this will be our main schools and main school approval webinar. For those of you who may have just joined, once again, you do have camera and microphone privileges. Please make sure your microphone remains muted. If you have a question, you can use the raise hand feature up in the top bar um, and or you can put it into the chat that is also up at the top. You can click on that little chat bubble and it will come right to us so we can answer your questions. Um, we will have an opportunity at the end of the presentation to answer questions. If they come up along the way, we may be able to get to them. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Upcoming reports and webinars for the end of the year of end of school year timeframe. The main schools report, uh, we're having our webinar today. It will open on the 15th and will be due about 7.30 end of July. ESEA demographics will have that webinar in two weeks um, and that will open on the 15th and be due on the 15th of June. Um, end of year reporting, that's your quarterly reports. Those uh, will have a webinar on the 21st and it's open. It's, it's been open all year. Um, so you can go ahead and get any information in there for attendance, bullying, behavior, and truancy. Um, and those will have a couple different due dates. Uh, we'll go over in that webinar. Then we have our end of year exiting students from Synergy, which is not actually a report, but rather just exiting your students, making sure that that gets done. We'll have a webinar on the 28th about how to do that. And you should have that done by 630, um, as that is the last day that you'll be able to have students enrolled for this current school year. All right, um, and then special education exit report that will be uh, we'll have that webinar on the 4th of June and your open date will be 6 1 and due on 7 30. So that is what we have coming up in the next few weeks uh, for webinars and for reports that are opening up. So on to main schools. So the directions on how to find this report can be found on the data reporting instructions page on the help desk website. Um, it is the tile with the data pipe chart. So you can go to that location and find the instructions under main schools. So once you're there, you're gonna go to the Medems help desk, you're gonna go to data reporting instructions, and then it's in alphabetical order, main schools instructions. So those have been updated. They are ready for this school year. This report is uh, how, how you all are reporting to us about organizational information, changes in grade level spans in schools, um, changes in locations of offices, things like that. So this is a very important uh, report that gets all that information aggregated uh, so that we can make sure that we're getting you the most up-to-date information throughout the school year next year. Uh, this also provides at, um, attestation that uh, all statutory requirements are being met by your LEA. So you'll want to make sure that you're going through and making sure you're marking all of the questions along the way. This is, uh, once again, as the contact information is super important to make sure that you are up to date with that. Um, so just kind of pay attention as you're going along, making sure that all of your contact information is up to date, ready to go for next school year. All LEAs um, are required to report, including private, charter, EUT, public schools, and other SAUs. So everyone needs to complete this report in order to make sure that everything goes along smoothly, all requirements are met, um, et cetera. This report will be open on the 15th. So it uh, was, was originally going to open um, there was a notice that went out that said it would open on the 1st. It has been pushed back to the 15th of May. So please be aware of that, that it will not open tomorrow. It will open in two weeks. So uh, please be aware of that and please have it done by the 30th of July. That, um, that will give us time to make sure that everything is all set for Synergy, NEO, um, all organizations set up will be ready to go um, for those reports. So. In order to find this report, you're going to navigate into NEO and Maine Schools has its own module. So in this module, you'll need to make sure that you have access to it. If you do not have access to it and you need access to this, your superintendent will need to submit an uh, access request on your behalf 
and you will have that process and that access will be granted um, through the help desk. Superintendents do need to be verified for this report. So anyone with staff access in NEO will need to go into the staff certification report, uh, go to district roles and assign the superintendent to the designee of superintendent. So that is an important first step for this report. So make sure that your superintendent has been verified before they go in and um, are finishing this report. So over navigation again, so this is the NEO dashboard. This is where you're going to click on main schools. Once you're in main schools, you're going to go to search for SAUs and their schools to update. That will open up this screen for you where you can select your SAU and search for it. You'll wanna make sure that you select this uh, fiscal year, uh, fiscal year, school year 2024, 2025 will be fiscal year 2025. So just be aware of that, that it is the last year of the school year setting. So this, we are working on 2025. Once you're there, you should have your district pop up. You so your SAU name will pop up and it will show your progress bar. Um, in So most, all of them are going to start in new status. So that means they have not been started. Once you've started going through and editing some information, you've been saving some information in there, it will update to in progress. Once you've submitted, you'll have organization data submitted. Uh, then it's kind of a progression from here. So if you're pending school approval, uh, it's being reviewed by Pam Ford Taylor. Um, and then provisional pending SAU action means that there have been some there's been information reported back to you that needs to be uh, taken action on before it can be approved uh, in its final stage. And then if there's any rejection, you'll need to make sure that you are reviewing those notes at the bottom again. And approval means you win, you did it, <laughs> you're all done. So once you are there, once you have selected the SAU name, you're gonna come into this screen, you'll see the fiscal year, you'll just wanna make sure that all this information is correct up at the top of the report. And you'll, so 2025, once again, will be up there at the top in the fiscal year. Then you will get into the entry of data. This is where you really wanna pay attention up here at the top in this contact information, make sure that it is up to date and ready to go. All fields are required except for the admin office facts. So you'll wanna make sure that that is all correct. Please verify your website link goes to the most up-to-date website for your SAU. The mailing address is only needed if, the, if it is different than the physical address. Um, if you have a superintendent who is, um, not who if, if it's a superintendent's residency it can that can be the um, situation for that um, i know some instances the superintendent doesn't have an office so this would be if in order to get information they would need to have their home office listed here uh, but it should not overall be your superintendent's residence it should be the location of your central office and then your physical address will be your central office or town office if you do not have a central office. Um, this one should not be a personal residence. So just be aware of that, that if your superintendent needs to get mail um, and they are working from home, then the mailing address will be their home address, but their physical address may be their um, superintendent's office. Sorry, question popped in, I just wanna check on that yeah we'll get to we'll get to that question in a little bit so i'm going to hold off on that one katie all right so once you've answered all the contact information questions up at the top you will want to make sure that you have answered all of the questions along the bottom so this um the number of questions will vary based on the type of organization that you are. Um, so if you're a public school, it will look different than a private school. Um, so just make sure that you're going through answering all the questions. This is your attestation section of the report. So you'll wanna make sure that you're going through and answering all of these. Once you have answered everything to the best of your knowledge, uh, you'll wanna make sure everything is answered and you'll confirm that all the questions have been reviewed. 
So that was SAU data. So this is um, the SAU level, district level data. And then each of the schools that you have has a separate section as well. So this is where you would have a specific school listed up at the top. You would want to make sure that you're listing for that specific school. You can see it um, up here, the school name. You'll want to make sure that, that you are aware which section you're working in. The grade spans are super important. That is what informs what we set up in Synergy to make sure that you have the ability to enroll your students in the correct grade levels within each school. So please make sure you're double, triple checking that. Uh, to ensure that that is accurate. Once again, please make sure that your URL is active uh, by clicking on it, taking it, going to that website, making sure that it is the accurate website for your school. You once again have a list of questions, number of questions, I'm sorry, the number of schools that you end up popping up will be based on the number of schools that are entered in your district. So um, this will be um, different for each SAU as well. And then you'll need to confirm that you've answered all the questions for that particular school. And then once you're at the bottom, once you've done all of your SAU, all of your schools within your SAU, you will want to make sure that you click save along the way. Even if you haven't finished the report, if you go into this report and you're working on it, go to the bottom, press save, even if it's not done. Uh, so just save along the way. This was this is a really big one. You don't want to lose any information along the way. So just make sure that you are saving and saving and saving. Then you will have the option, your superintendent will have the option to submit once everything is completed. Um, so you'll see that that date will be um, filled in and then your superintendent name will be there once it is submitted to DOE. So that is that is the overall report. So um, pressing save um, before submitting to the DOE and then uh, status updates are sent to set up to be delivered to your superintendent email. If you have a change in a superintendent over the summer and uh, they start on 7-1, then and you don't want to have your current superintendent filling this information out, uh, you can wait until 7-1 to get this completed. Uh, you would just have to go in and verify that superintendent once they start with their current information. Um, they would have to have a NEO account set up, uh, and then you would have to have them set up as the contact in NEO staff um, under that designee. So you can wait until 7-1 to get this started uh, or get this finished. Um, any status updates are going to go to them. Um, so you would want to make sure that you have the most up-to-date superintendent in NEO staff as you finish up this report. You can start entering things now, like if you know addresses, you know um, uh, email, you know phone number, you can start putting that information in. And then on 7-1, when they get set up, you can have them go in and they will get the status updates. But uh, just be aware of that. So you can do that. Are there any other questions about this report? I'm not hearing anything. So with that, we will put this up here. So um, for our, any questions that you may have about data entry, how to navigate to this report, how to set up your designee of your superintendent, um, any questions along those lines, please feel free to reach out to the Medems Help Desk uh, with those questions. And then once you have, if you have any questions about approval, um, or any statutory requirements, please feel free to reach out to Pamela Ford Taylor uh, with any of those questions that you may have in that regard. Once again, these resources that we discussed today are on the Medems Help Desk page of the main DOE website. Um, so please uh, feel free to reach out with any questions about that. If you need help navigating those resources, Medems Help Desk can be a really great resource as well. 
Um, if you wanted, if you have anyone new who has recently started and is doing this for the first time, needs some help with navigation and Neo or Synergy in general, please feel free to have them reach out to me, um, alexandra.cookson at main.gov. So I'd be happy to help with some of those navigations in those two systems. Not seeing any further questions. Um, so please um, reach out if you have anything come up. And I hope everyone has a great Tuesday. This report will open on the 15th and we'll be here to support you along the way. Have a great day, everyone.